a fundamental flaw with shot collars and shot collar training that I think is very important for people to understand. And that flaw is that shot collars turned up super high and the dog shocked when it's showing aggression or before aggression or during leash activity or during fear can scramble the dog's brain. That's how I describe it to clients. It can scramble the dog's brain. I didn't realize this from listening to uh, uh, other trainers say shot collars are bad or from reading it in a book or from any of, or from just thinking shot collars seem bad, I'm gonna never use them. I learned this organically from having clients come out and me for aggression and me getting them with a the dog, maybe on muzzle, maybe not, usually with my old dog Bosco. And then literally the dog being cool to attacking or to doing something that made no sense. This was a, and then I would, years ago, I would sort of be like, that makes no sense. Dogs are pretty predictable animals, actually. They're about as predictable as people, right? They're, you, dogs are not just gonna go attack a dog. If your dog's barking and lunging, it's not a surprise when it attacks a dog, but they're pretty predictable. If they're playing, they're generally gonna be good if that play stays the same. They're not gonna just attack. But when shot collars are used, the brain turned up too high, the brain can be scrambled and that dog is no longer trustworthy. I will often not take shot collar trained dogs um, when they have aggression issues because I can't trust them. I can't trust that if I see goodness, 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 you often still see an attack. It's, so it happened organically and then the, I would sort of go, why, why did that happen? Then maybe the first client, it was kind of like, oh, has a shot collar been used? And they say yes. And then I start to go, oh, okay. And then it would happen again. And again, and I'd say about 95% of the people that their dog doesn't show normal behavior patterns, a shot collar has been used. And it just happened over the years. Now I have, they have to check a box that says on their form that shot collar has been used. So I know what to expect. The worst attack I ever had, I still have scar scars right here, was from a golden retriever that had been trained with harsh shot collar methods. So why are they being used? Well, they're not being used to make dogs like other dogs. They're just not. So what's happening? There, there's low level shot collar, by the way. Some trainers that I know of, good trainers that I know of, use low level shot collar training. And I think these people are good trainers. I don't think they would do it if it didn't work. We're not talking low level. We're not talking about getting the dog's attention. We're talking about dog hates other dogs, walks down the street, looks at that other dog, growls, and gets lit up. Imagine what that does to the dog's brain. Imagine the Pavlovian thing that's happening to a dog. Dogs are like four-year-old children, in my opinion, about the emotional, about the intellectual level of a four-year-old, okay? They see that other dog, they go, I don't like that dog. Extreme pain, extreme pain is being applied. You, you, Pavlovian wise, classically conditioning wise, that dog hates that, that dog even more. Might not growl anymore, still hates the dog. What if that dog ever is off leash and runs up to them? They might be like, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, and then they attack. Now you can help leash reactivity with shot collar training. You cannot help a dog to like another dog. Don't believe me? Call up your local shot collar trainer. Okay, and go, and a lot of shot collar trainers work with aggressive dogs because people think, oh, my dog is aggressive, so I need to go to the most extreme method. What would be the most extreme method? Shot collars, right? We have an extreme behavior, we need an extreme method. That's not how it works though. But shot collar get, trainers get called for aggression a lot because of that thinking by clients, right? But call a local shot collar trainer and go, yeah, I have an aggressive dog or a reactive dog, maybe not even very aggressive. And then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, we, here's what we'll do, blah, blah, blah. And then be like, well, my dog play with other dogs. And the answer is always no from them because they know that dog cannot be trusted after that shot collar is used. I have aggressive dogs out here every day for private sessions and nine times out of 10, it's playing with my dog or another dog at the end of the session because there's a slow process to it where I have to trust the dog in this situation. Then I trust it in this. If it doesn't, if it can't handle this situation, why would I take it to the next step? Right? If it can't do it with a muzzle or through a, or on a leash or, or through a fence, blah, blah, blah. And if, if it shows me 
that it can handle the next step, it'll go to the next step and the next step. Then we add other dogs, the next step. Shot collar trainers don't let dogs run around with other dogs because something can pop off at any moment. Okay, I'm, I'm, and I'm not talking about shot collars for stakes or shot collars for comes. I really don't have a huge problem with that. I don't think shot collars are like that mean. My problem with shot collars is not that they're mean. That's what most clients sitting here, they go, no, I don't wanna do that, that's mean. That's not my problem with shot collars. Like my goal with my kids and my dog is not to always be nice. That's not my goal in life. My goal is to have good kids, successful kids, happy kids. My goal is to have good dogs, successful dogs, happy dogs, confident dogs. It's not that I need to be nice all the time. If your kid is a drug addict and you have to kick them out on the street, take their car, take their money, that's probably the most loving thing you can do for your child. It's very mean and it's probably the best thing. If your kid, there are tough love situations that are good for the dog or the client. So I don't have a problem with it's mean, okay? Um, if your kid is about to run on the street, a little kid, and they almost get hit by a car and you run up to you and you go, don't ever do that again. That's not very nice. It's actually quite mean, they'll probably cry. But you are, you are punishing a behavior that's dangerous, that they could die from. So you need to eliminate that behavior. So the meanness part of shot callers is not why I don't use them. It's the, you can make things worse problem with shot callers. And once you go there, I have people sit in my office once a week, maybe once every two weeks. And I'm like, I can't, I, I, I don't think I can do anything for you or your dog because they went to that shot collar trainer for three months and that dog was lit up every time it growled at a dog. Um, and the dog needs years to rehab from that. Years. You shock away all the precursors to aggression. I wanna see precursors. I wanna see barks and lunges. I, wanna see, I don't wanna see the dog hide it, but yet still hate that dog because it associates shocks with the dog and then attack. Okay. I'm okay with eliminating precursors when my punishment is, is a clap and a shock and then go grab the dog. And the dog's like, okay, that is generally enough. We don't need what I call acute pain. By the way, this is what a this is a vibrating collar. This isn't a shock collar. These are fine. I don't use it much. We pull this thing out once a year, maybe, right? It vibrates. When the dog barks, it vibrates. But it looks like this. This is what a shock collar looks like. And there's a current between these two things and it shocks them. It's a very, uh, uh, it's very painful if turned up and it's very acute. It's, it's like right here, it's very shocking, right? It's not like any other form of punishment. It's, it's people like it because it can be done distally. You have a remote, right? And you can shock them from a distance, right? Which, you know, I'm never gonna use shock collars I never have. I never will. I don't need to. I have solutions and my business is so healthy. Why would I be like, yeah, let's get into the shot collar business. Like it's never going to happen. Um, I don't need to, but they're all, but I don't have a problem with people using shot collars for the dog coming. Dog's running away. If you, if it's trained right and the dog goes, they hear come and they go, if I don't go back to that guy, I'm gonna feel pain. Now, is it nice? Probably not. I wouldn't shock my kids. I wouldn't shock my dog, but I get it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, uh, say someone shouldn't do it. I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but don't ever use it for fear, aggression, or reactivity, ever. You would be surprised how many people sit in this office and they're just like, I sent them away and it made everything worse. And I'm like, yeah. and. I don't know if I can help you. Now they have no solutions. No solution, because it ruined the dog. You don't want to do anything that ruins your dog, right? That's why I would err on like treats then err on this. The treats aren't gonna ruin your dog. They're not gonna fry your dog's brain. And like positive reinforcement trait, like I said, I don't, I don't mind it for come, I don't mind it for stay. Right? I have a way to train stay that you don't need it, but I don't mind it. I would sit there too if I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna feel a bunch of pain if I get up. You can train a really great stay. Not the worst thing in the world. How about jumping fences? Shark colors are great for, 
Jumping fences and running around is a very difficult behavior to get rid of. Think about the reinforcement, right? They're in their boring yard. And even if you make it super exciting, it ain't as exciting as jumping that fence and roaming around and getting exercise and fighting with dogs for fence and maybe humping dogs, whatever they do when they're running around. How are you gonna make your yard that reinforcing? You're probably not actually. So shot collar, they go up, you're in your house, I don't know, whatever. And they go up to the fence, maybe they touch the fence or jump on the fence and you shock them. Or they look up to go over the fence and you shock them. I get it. I get why people use it. And don't let positive trainers just say, oh my God, you should never use it. Because they don't have answers to these pro to that problem and to many problems. Like jumping fence, positive reinforcement trainers have zero answer for it. I guarantee it. They're going to tell you to make your yard more reinforcing, which is going to help, might not fix it. They're going to tell you to build, they, they say all this crazy stuff, uh, build your fence higher. Who out there has money to build your fence higher? I've built fences higher. It's a pain, okay? So the, the answer cannot be money into fences. I mean, maybe you have the money, great. That's actually, if I was at someone's house, I'd say build a fence higher. If I'm at someone's house that doesn't have money, I'm not gonna say build a fence higher. I'm gonna say buy, a, well, I might say buy a $100 shot collar and call this other guy, because I don't do it. But, you know, so that's my fundamental problem with shot collars. Should you use them for some things? Fine, use them. Call a trainer, use them. Should you use them for aggression? Never. Don't do it. You have to trust me on this, okay? Don't do it. They look at a dog, they feel extreme pain. What do you think they think about that dog? You think they like that dog anymore? You think they hate that dog because their four-year-old, child four-year-old brain does not get it. They Pavlovian wise, they have a different, they have a bad feeling about that dog. But before they kind of didn't like that dog. Now they associate extreme pain with that dog. They don't get it. Their brain doesn't get it. And then you fry their brain and then, and you shock out the precursors. It's bad news.